Hey folks, welcome to Venice. Venice as a city has always had a problem with overcrowding issues, especially during and after pandemics. So heck, <laughs> during 15th century, they even came up with the first idea of an island quarantine because the Black Death was sweeping through the crowded streets of the entire city. So they have been doing some pretty bad things to overcrowded areas. But now they're doing the real bad stuff now. They're gonna charge you money. And according to some local tourist officials, uh, Venezia has always welcomed the visitors from all ages and all countries since the past millennia. And yet, uh, since the recent years, there has been a huge surge of tourists coming over that is deemed to be low value. They cannot afford to stay on the island and thus they come over just for day trips and go back to their lodging on the mainland. And thus, they want to do something about it. Not trying to sound like an alpha male dating coach or something like that, but low value it is indeed. Well, here's the thing. All of the hotels and hostels on the Lagoon Island goes for sky high prices. So why don't you just come and stay on the mainland district here in Mestre, where you can get much cleaner, much bigger hostels for nearly one fifth of the price and simply just commute into town. I mean, why not, right? The trains are extremely frequent, runs every five or six minutes. They cost one euro and fifty and takes only ten minutes. So why not? This is the attractiveness of Europe. It is always so connected and that is what brings all of the people together. And that's why Europe's travel industry is one of the best. But Venice is about to change that. It wants to punish me and then you for doing this. Starting sometime in 2023, any visitor that comes for a day trip to Venice has to pay a small fee. It ranges somewhere from 3 euros on the quietest day all the way into 10 euros on most of the busiest days. And if you stay in a hotel somewhere on the island, you are actually exempt. And uh, that sounds like a very, very wild proposition. And this development has never been seen in any other major city in the world. So let's analyze its advantages as well as disadvantages. The good? Of course, this is gonna keep some visitors away. Just the notion of a city trying to charge you to visit it is already gonna churn some stomachs. And isn't that kind of a disgust for visitor the motivation for you to click on this video, right? And not to mention on peak days, uh, the city of Venice, a 50,000 people city, will actually receive about visitors triple that amount. That means for every resident, you will receive three visitors. So of course, it can get extremely unbearable. And the second part, is that it is free money right with a projected income of nearly one million dollars a day the city can definitely put this huge sum of money into some good use there are a lot of different corners of this ancient island that needs a lot of TLC so of course this is free money and I'm pretty sure that in the near horizon there will be many many improvements to come But the bad thing, I'm not sure if it will work. Um, 10 euros might be a significant sum for someone who will nickel and dime his way through Europe and is running a travel hacking YouTube channel, but I doubt it is gonna make a significant dent on the budget of Jessica on her spring break vacay from Arizona after she paid $1,400 on a flight ticket to Venice or the rich wealthy Chinese tourists coming in huge droves and groups that you know simply wear Rolexes and carry LV bags and their LV bags also wear Rolexes. As a result, the overcrowding issue in Venice may not be alleviated at all because 10 euros to most people, you know, do not sting at all. One has to raise it to probably like 30 or maybe even 50 in order to make even like a tiny bit of a difference. Sure, it has been done before. Um, so like the country of Bhutan, for example, charges a whopping $250 per day fee for any visitor. And many high-end islands like Seychelles and Tahiti will also intentionally raise their own bar in order to basically keep out all of the plebeians and only allow the rich and perhaps the richer. But that cannot work for Venice, and here's why. A price hike for somewhere as famous as Venice 
is only gonna make things more expensive. In the medium term, the hotel prices will basically keep on par with the total cost of visiting. That means all of the hotels on the island will raise about 10 euros per night. So that all of the costs compared uh, with off the island, such as in Mestre, will be completely the same pre-payment era. Thus, anyone who is able to compare will realize that there's no difference before and after the payment. Everyone just needs to pay 10 euros extra. And thus, the balance is restored and nothing has changed. Venice will keep on getting more and more crowded. And now let's take a look at Bhutan. Have you or anyone you know have ever visited or even heard of this place? Good chances is that the answer is no. And this is for a reason. A high entropy is a deterrent, and a very high entropy is a very good deterrent. While Bhutan does not necessarily need any visitor in order to survive, they actually don't want any visitor, Venice is completely based upon tourism. And that means if it is a bad deterrent, aka a low fee, there is almost no effect on the entrance at all. While if it's a good enough deterrent, if it's a very high fee, then it completely annihilates Venice's local economy and thus it is a lose-lose situation. Maybe there is a middle point, a perfect balance between everything. Let's say you can get your pasta and eat it too. Well, that can be a whole new slew of problem because this basically means that you gatekeep out all of the plebeians who cannot afford paying 200 to 500 euros a pop staying on the island and only the people rich enough gets to come and visit the island. Well, that's not necessarily a bad thing when you create a mini Italian Tahiti, but it comes with a different set of challenges. First thing is that you need to know um, this means all of the upper class people coming over here have very high standards and their standards can be demanding. Ooh, wakey wakey, okay? Uh, I want you to wake up, okay? And think like a businessman, okay? Like what I'm doing, okay? Think this way. Screw those uh, mom and pop shop that Venice is trying so hard to preserve, okay? I want you to think global, international, intercontinental even. Oh right, talking about intercontinental. I want an intercontinental here, right here at this corner, facing San Marcos Basilica. You know, that is what international upscale means, okay? And next to it, I want a St. Regis, and then I want a Four Season, and then Andas, and then Aman, okay? I want you to line this entire plaza with all of the best that you have got, okay? As for restaurants, just uh, those old ass stupid Venetian uh, buffets and bars, uh, screw them, okay? I want the best of the best international National chef to set up their best crown jewels here in the city, okay? I'm talking about uh, uh, the best uh, Asian fusion style cuisine with an Italian twist, okay? And then a little bit of a um, uh, seafood restaurant with a French pizzazz, okay? Yeah, these are all of the things that all of these, you know, millionaires and billionaires, they want to look at, you know? They, they don't want to look at those old stupid uh, uh, gold dome, things like that. No, 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 no. I'm thinking about modernity. I'm thinking about fluidity. I'm thinking about synergy, okay? These are the things that we want here. Oh, the locals that lost their jobs because of this? Okay, just don't worry about it. The best of them will be honored to work with all of our international colleagues in these gigantic corporations that are some of the best in the entire world. Um, the other, uh, they, they can do something else. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that, that's, that's mostly about it. What? You don't like that? What do you mean you don't like that? Isn't this what you want? I'm describing literally the model of Tahiti and Maldives right now. Yeah, don't believe me? Just think this way. Ask anyone who has been to Tahiti, who has been to Maldives, what language do the local people speak? What religion do they have? What kind of culture do they have? What do they eat for breakfast? You can't figure it out either, huh? How about um, have any of you guys who have been to those countries ever stepped onto uh, the property of uh, someone who is uh, uh, some places that's actually owned by a Maldivian or a Tahitian. No? Yeah, as I expected. Because mass tourism from the middle class may take all of the locals and, and basically make them look like uh, animals in a zoo. The upscale tourism instead ignores the locals completely. Another final thing I want to touch on is do you ever think about what the locals are feeling, right? Because before even this policy was announced, the locals have vehemently protested against uh, uh, installing all kinds of turnstiles in order to restrict the access to the island because it makes them feel like they're living in a very, very big amusement park. 
but I don't know if this is gonna work with turnstiles or without because the very idea of this policy is basically to make Venice a more exclusive zone a more exclusive island so it is going against the very idea of the locals trying to live a normal life and now we have talked extensively about the pros and cons of this new idea of Venice the biggest hurdle still remains how are you supposed to even enforce it? I mean, we already talked about the lack of um, turnstiles as the locals will protest it as it turns into a giant amusement park. So what's the other way of doing this? Um, having some kind of special pass for the locals? Or maybe um, whenever you book a bus or a train or even a ferry to go onto the island, you have to show your booking confirmation email? Uh, I really don't know and genuinely the locals have no idea either because the officials even until about now like four or five months before implementation still have absolutely no idea how they are supposed to do it so yeah it it is gonna be quite a show and of course this is already the easiest way to do it Venice is an island so yeah of course, it is very easy to control the entry and exit points, but imagine trying to do this in a much bigger and much more touristy area such as Paris, Rome, or Barcelona. But in the end, I sincerely hope that they can succeed in this endeavor, because God knows the Venetians need a break, and the city will desperately need all of those money that they can collect. But on the other hand, I think they also need to be extremely careful as this can easily turn into one of the biggest lose-lose scenario in the entire world. They not only gonna lose out all of the tourists who are gonna come and enjoy one of the best cities in the world, Venice is also going to lose its soul if they are not being careful. So what do you think? What is your opinion on this really interesting development of the city? And let me know in the comment section down below. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow me and travel all around the world. And oh, right now, I think you would just be like me. Let's cough up 10 extra euros and be on our merry way. And let's enjoy the beautiful city of Venice. Albeit, it is a little bit crowded right now.